So Ampere Computing have just announced an 80 core, 64 bit ARM based processor, an 80 core, not 80 threads, but 80 cores. Now, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Ampere Computing are a computer company that specialize in building ARM-based processors for the server market. And they've just released the Ampere Ultra, which is an 80-core ARM processor. So let's dive right in and see what we can find out about this new processor. So yes, 80 cores, not 80 threads, but 80 cores. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. And this new processor, the Ultra, can go up to 80 cores at three gigahertz. Now each core has 64K of level one instruction cache, 64K of level one data cache, and then one megabyte of L2 data cache per CPU core. It's absolutely per CPU core. So you can imagine this, there's 80 lots of these across the whole chip. So you can really imagine how much L1 and L2 cache there is here in the entire system. And then there's 32 megabytes of a system level cache which is shared across all of the cores and this chip is built using a seven nanometer process. Now here is the slide themselves from uh, Ampere and it says 80 64 bit ARM CPU cores at three gigahertz. It's a four wide super scalar, aggressive out of order execution. We can talk more about the CPU design, each core design in a moment. Single threaded cores for performance and security. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Now the point is here, 80 cores is great for uh, cloud computing because you've got lots of simultaneous connections coming in over the internet. You're running your web server, you're running your software service, you're running your database, whatever it is that you're running. Okay, and you need to be able to handle all of those separate connections coming in Okay, and you need to offer good performance, but here performance isn't the most important thing. It is the, the be able to do things in parallel and then the IO to go to talk to the disk, talk to the network and so on. And that's what this chip is designed to do. Now the Ampere Ultra processor is based on the ARM Neoverse N1 CPU design. Now basically ARM started listing separate CPU designs for servers back in uh, 2018, 2018, and the M1, N1 is the same generation as the Cortex-A76. Now, of course, since then we've had the Cortex-A77, but the N1 is the same generation as the Cortex-A76, and it's designed specifically for servers doing lots of stuff around the caching, around the I.O. stuff, so you can get fast networking and fast access to the disks. And here is a slide from our ARM at the time they announced the Neoverse N1, the foundation of a new family of infrastructure focused products. And what they mean by infrastructure there is that there is servers basically, simultaneously optimized for high performance and high power and area efficiency. Of course, the attraction is here on ARM, which we'll talk about in a moment, is that you can have all of these 80 cores and you're not gonna be producing anywhere near as much heat or using as much electricity as you would from processors from other uh, companies. Okay, and as you can see here, it's the 64-bit uh, ARM V8 uh, processor with, here you can see the numbers at 64K cache, 64K cache, private L2 cache, 512 or one megabyte, and Ampere have gone with the one megabyte version. And then notice this here, we'll see this come up in a minute, the CMN 600 mesh uh, interconnect, how all these things uh, talk to each other. And ARM presented different solutions, different things this could be used for, uh, at the time of announcing the Neoverse N1. And we can see this one here. This is the cloud compute version, which you get 48, 64 or 96 CPUs. They are some of the combinations they've gone for. Ampere went for, of course, 80 uh, CPUs uh, and it's multi-socket, which we'll talk about more in a second. So Java, Docker, Kubernetes, DBs, and all this kind of stuff that you want to happen uh, up in a cloud uh, server. That's what this chip was designed for, this core design for and Ampere have gone and made that into an actual processor and we can see here again the talk of the CCIX interconnect which we, I said we'll see in a moment. And this is the diagram from uh, Ampere Computing themselves is the ultra block diagram and here you can see all those 80 CPU cores each one with an L1 cache and an L2 cache there is a load of memory that it can access here, DDR4, 
There is the interconnect which gives it access to all the PCI Express Generation 4 lanes. We'll talk more about that in a second. And other things like, uh, you know, GPIO pins and I2C and all this kind of stuff. And then this actually can boot using the new server boot specification, which means that for from going forward, we really are going to have ARM processor boards that have a common way of booting. And this is even coming to the Raspberry Pi. So this will make booting different operating systems much more standard for server type products uh, on ARM. Now we said this is no hyper threading and this is really really important with hyper threading you get two virtual CPUs that are trying to access one physical CPU and I've got a whole video on this I won't go into now uh, a video called what is hyper threading I really recommend you watch it it uh, explains this idea of two virtual CPUs but one physical CPU now the problem with this idea is it can create an excessive amount of cache misses and branch prediction failures because there are like two CPUs with all of the stuff they're doing trying to access one physical CPU, one pipeline, one cache, one branch predictor, and it can be get confusing for the caching and the branch predictor. So they can sometimes they can fail, and there's a slide about that in a minute. And also a lot of the side channel security bugs we've seen recently, Spectra and a whole bunch of others that have come forth since then are to do with hyper threading because if you run basically one program in virtual CPU one and it does some stuff to make sure that the, the caches are loaded with some certain data, then actually you can access those through, through the virtual CPU number two, okay? Even though it's a separate running program, a separate running thread, a separate running thing on your operating system, it's taking to a fact that it knows another program is doing something else on that same physical CPU because there are two virtual CPUs. Now, OpenBSD, for example, disables hyper-threading by default, not because it can't cope with it, because it says it's not safe security-wise. Now, this new process does not have hyper-threading. We're talking about single real cores. Each one of those 80 cores is a real CPU core. And here is a slide that Ampere Computing uh, showed. Now, basically, when you've got a normal CPU thread running here, you're going to get a cache miss from time to time, which means that uh, data has to go and get from the memory, and that is like a long time for a CPU to wait for actually something coming from real memory. Oh, that's, you know, even though we're talking about running at how many gigahertz, that's a long time. Okay, so you get this miss here in the pipeline while it's waiting, a bubble, while it's waiting for that data to come along. And then maybe here there's a branch uh, mispredict, which means again, it has to wait a little bit while it sorts itself out. But they're saying in this scenario here, that you might take 10 clocks to execute seven actual uh, instructions. Now in this one, you've got multi-threading going on, that can be exasperated. So the, the cache miss can be longer, the branch predict can be longer, and their example here is that you get 15 clocks to run what should happen in let's say 10 clocks. So there are this problem of what they call the noisy neighbor, the other process that's running on the other virtual core that's connected to your physical core can actually cause performance problems for the first virtual core. And again, I go into this in my hyper-threading video. Uh, but when you have single core, the performance is much more predictable, much more consistent. And that's what they are aiming for with this cloud-based server processor. And then talking quickly about the memory, they're saying here that there is 872-bit DDR3200 channels exceeding 200 gigabits a second per socket. Okay, and then up to four terabytes of memory per socket. And of course, again, a lot of these tasks are memory hungry. So if you're running these, uh, all these connections and you want this huge in-memory data to be inside your server, dealing with whatever it loaded is that you're providing, then that is a great four terabytes, uh, eight 72-bit uh, channels there. So that's uh, what they've really emphasized, not only the CPU performance, but the memory bandwidth. And the same can also be said about the I.O., which is how you talk to things like the networking, how you talk to uh, the, the disks. Okay, so 128 lanes of PCI Express Generation 4. Okay, 16, X16 controllers, all the lanes available across uh, everything there. And of course, it's all connected with this uh, coherent internet, which I talked about a little earlier on. So again, fast memory, fast IO, and fast CPUs. That's the key to getting this cloud server uh, optimized for that workload. Now here they just talk a little bit about how you can compare this to other uh, processors from AMD, from Intel. So of course, if you look per rack, 
Now, of course, a rack is, you know, like a big, uh, big like piece of furniture. So if you've ever seen them, you can see them here on the left and the right here. These are basically racks. Each one of these little uh, nodules here, look, these little loops, is kind of a one or a two U uh, computer that goes in a rack. And you have a whole rack with all of these uh, computers in there. So per rack, you can have 38% higher density than you can with the AMD Epic 7702 and 173% higher density than with this EM, uh, Intel Xeon processor. And then when you talk about actual performance per rack, so again, the key is here in a server situation, in a hosting situation, you've got a big computer room with all the computers in it, 13% higher performance per rack, 120% higher performance per rack compared to this particular Xeon. So they're trying to push the idea that you can get more into the rack, you've got more cores per rack, and so you're getting better performance and better density. That's the selling point of the ARM chip here, because you've got all those 80 cores in one inside one chip, which is uh, pretty amazing. And then to show this off, they're actually demonstrating two of their own servers, the Mount Jade and the Mount Snow, up to 80 cores, uh, PCI Generation 4, available in 1U and 2U. And we'll just dive quickly into the uh, Mount Snow uh, example. They've given that here. Here is their thing. So we're talking about efficiency. We're talking about memory, storage, and networking. Obviously, there is some platform management going on here. All these details, of course, are available on their website. But the, let's have a look at the specification. This is what I like. Up to 80 cores per processor. There's the 8 times 72 bit uh, memory, up to 16 DIMMs, 4 terabytes of RAM available, 8 PCI generation 4 slots. And then if you look at another thing here at the front of that, let's just go back a slide, look at all this here. These are all this storage going on here. And notice there's some storage stuff going on here at the back. Okay, when you look at this, 24 times 2.5 hot slot wall SSD slots in the front. Then two, uh, two times 2.5 inch hot swappable hard, hard disks for the back, plus two M2 slots on the board it, on the board itself, and it also runs uh, CentOS 8. So that's a pretty nice server setup there. Okay, so that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video and this look at this 80 core ARM-based 64-bit server. Oh, that would be so nice to get my hands on one of those. Who knows whether that will ever happen. Anyway, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of video, do subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.